I thank the organizer for uh, giving me the opportunity to present you some uh, recent results on the wave propagation in Antidocitaire universe and especially some uh, mathematical results in uh, brain cosmology. The brain cosmology is a cosmology in which uh, we consider our world as a sum manifold in some uh, universe with a higher uh, dimension. The, the, this talk uh, has uh, several parts. I mainly uh, want to discuss on the uh, Klein-Gordon equation in antidecitaire uh, space-time. And in particular, I want to investigate the role of the conformal boundary of the universe and discuss some issues concerning the physics on this uh, boundary, in particular the holographic uh, principle. And uh, the, last, uh, the last part is devoted to the brain cosmology, and I want to prove some results on the linear stability for some cosmological uh, model, mainly the Minkowski brain and the moving brain, more especially the De Sitter brain. First, uh, we begin with some explanation for uh, about the introduction of a new uh, space-like dimension. Uh, first, there is uh, the old idea by Kaluza and Klein. If you take uh, the Einstein-Hilbert action on uh, this manifold, where we add a small torus, space-like, we find the Einstein equation and the Maxwell equation. And, uh, and we, you have uh, unified uh, the electromagnetism and the gravity. Uh, this approach was being uh, extended to the string theory and uh, by replacing the small torus by a calabig yao uh, manifold, always a small compact manifold. Secondly, the so-called holographic principle related to the Bekenstein theorem. Bekenstein theorem give, uh, gives a uh, upper bound of the amount of information contained in a bulk and it's rather surprising since uh, the upper bound is uh, given by the area of the boundary. You have gained one dimension. In the context of uh, PDEs, the holographic principle states that the solution of a wave equation is completely characterized by its value on the boundary. It's incredible. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> Since uh, we work in a Lorentzian uh, framework uh, in, and not uh, in a Riemannian framework. In a Riemannian framework, the holographic principle is uh, trivial. It's a well-known uh, uniqueness theorem for the second order elliptic partial differential equation. But in Lorentzian manifold, for in a Lorentzian manifold, we deal with a uh, wave operator, that's a second order hyperbolic operator. And then it's incredible that the solution is completely characterized by the value on the boundary. Nevertheless, I'll prove it for some, uh, in some uh, functional framework. The last, uh, the last reason is the so-called uh, hierarchy problem that deals with the discrepancy be between the several uh, physical constants. Uh, the gravity is small constant, uh, the weak strength, the electromagnetic strength, there are uh, different, uh, different values. And to understand uh, this discrepancy, uh, Randall and Syndrome has uh, introduced uh, extended space-like dimension, unlike uh, a small torus or a compact Calabi-Yao manifold. And we have to understand why we can't see uh, this extra space-like dimension. And we have to prove that such a cosmological model is stable. The idea is to introduce this uh, this dimension uh, with the antidecitaire space line because uh, in, this in, th in this manifold the gravitation is uh, repulsive in some sense. 
few words on the antidecitor space-time. There are uh, several de definitions, algebraic, geometric, relativistic, and exercise for undergraduates. You can see the antidecitor space-time in the two, di two dimension as a one-sheet hyperboloid. And all the grid circles are time-like. And there are many, many, many closed curved time-like. It's a very unpleasant fact that you can avoid it by taking the universal covering. But it remains, it remains a very serious problem, the conformal boundary of the antidecitor space-time. Space and we can, uh, we can see this, uh, this difficulty as following. We chose a global coordinate. And the antidecitor space-time is just conformal with the uh, Einstein cylinder. We can uh, see that uh, we have the, the half of the four sphere, and the conformal factor tends to uh, infinity as we approach to the boundary. This is the antidecitor space-time, but in brand cosmology, we, uh, we work with half of uh, antidecitor space-time, and is, we consider the Poincaré patch, which is described very simply by uh, this, uh, this, uh, this set and this metric, very simple. We recognize the usual Minkowski metric and a conform factor that tends to zero as z tends to zero. As regards the classical uh, propagation, how, uh, how does uh, light prop propagate? The geodesic flow has the following form. As usual, the slope of the time-like curve is between minus one and plus one. There is uh, two, two things important in this picture. The boundary is time-like z equal to zero is the boundary of the universe. It's a conformal boundary, of course. And the second, the second important fact is the question, the issues concerning the reflection of the ray light on the boundary. It's undetermined since uh, we don't know how the singularities are uh, reflected. Some questions, some issues, some facts concerning the role, the boundary of the universe. An important property is the, in the previous slide, the time-like geodesic doesn't reach the boundary. Hence, we can expect that it is not necessary to add some condition on the boundary if we work with a massive field. In fact, it's, uh, uh, it's true. It's known as the theorem of Brighton, Loner, and Friedman. Nevertheless, there exist also plenty, several, several uh, large family of other dynamics. And I explain uh, the origi origin of uh, these uh, dynamics. Finally, la, the question is, uh, can we define the stress of the field on the boundary? And does this stress characterize the, the, all, the, all the field in the, in the wall bulk? That's to say the operator, holographic operator, that associates the stress on the boundary is this operator is one-to-one. -one. It's a Greek question concerning the holographic operator, and my answers will be yes. It's the first result in this domain. Well, the klein gordon equation, you can see uh, this partial differential equation here. On the wall antidecitor space-time, has been investigated by uh, many authors. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, we have to, to investigate the spectral properties of the Hamiltonian. 
and it's not very difficult. And the main result is this Hamiltonian is a self-adjoint operator when the mass, which is given by alpha, is large enough. In fact, it's essentially self-adjoint in L2 when alpha is large enough. There are many, many expansions, self-adjoint expansion for uh, alpha in this interval and no self-adjoint extension when alpha is less than uh, minus four. Now, uh, I want to describe uh, more precisely the Klein-Gordon field in the Poincaré patch in the framework of the finite energy uh, solution given by this energy. Donc, we consider the Klein-Gordon equation. Lambda is a free parameter describing the nature of the field. The energy is related to the homogeneous uh, Sobolev spaces or Bepolev space, BL1. The, this energy is positive. In fact, if this energy is finite, we have an implicit Dirichlet condition at the boundary. That's to say the field is zero at, on the boundary. In some sense, it's trivial. And an important, important uh, drawback, uh, the massless graviton doesn't belong in this uh, functional framework. The Cauchy problem is easily solved by a spectral uh, approach. There, there is a, a unique solution with the initial data uh, given in uh, <coughs> Bell 1 and L2 with the uh, usual uh, properties of causality. The proof is very, very simple. So we have construct solution finite energy solution in anti de Sitter space-time, satisfying a condition on the boundary, which is simply the Dirac condition. Now the interesting uh, property is the following. We can uh, express this solution as a superposition, linear superposition, of free Klein-Gordon field propagating in the Minkowski space-time with finite energy, the, the, solution, the, Klein, the solution of the Klein-Gordon equation in anti de Sitter space-time is equal to the sum of such free field. This expression is known as the Kaluza-Klein tower, the key to obtain important results such as Strickard's estimate or dispersive estimate. The, the factor here is the Bessel, uh, the Bessel function. Lambda is uh, the free parameter in the Klein-Gordon equation. Well, all these uh, Friedrich solutions are uh, now well known, but there are, there are uh, several drawbacks. But uh, before, uh, before I explain uh, the following, I want to... Uh, I want to emphasize a trick, a link, with higher, higher uh, dimensional Minkowski space-time. The idea consists in uh, considering coordinate Z as the radial coordinate of some uh, Euclidean space-time space of uh, higher dimension. And the result is following. If we take a Friedrich solution, then by this change of unknown, psi is solution of the free wave equation in some Minkowski space-time of higher dim dimension outside the origin. And when phi is finite energy, then psi is a solution in the whole Minkowski space-time. Therefore, we can recover many, many properties for the solution of the Klein-Gordon equation in anti de Sitter space-time with all the well-known properties for Psi, which is a simple a finite energy solution in Minkowski space-time. In particular, 
you can understand the role of the conformal boundary of the universe by the pullback theorem. And uh, we, we find that the boundary of anti-decitter space-time acts exactly like a perfect mirror as regards the propagation of the singularities. The Descartes law is respected. Moreover, there is no Wigan's principle in the anti-decitter manifold, but there exists a lacuna, a lacuna when we start with initial data compactly supported. There is a lacuna, and it's a result uh, somewhat uh, unexpected, since uh, the Wigan's principle is not, uh, is not satisfied. Well, uh, as regards the Friedrich solution, uh, we have uh, many, many results, but uh, there, uh, there are uh, uh, important drawbacks, mainly we have lost the massless graviton. And secondly, uh, the trace of the field on the boundary is zero, and the holographic operator is trivial, it's zero. There is no principle. There is no holographic principle. To overcome this drawback, I propose to look for the solution in the large, large functional framework by adding a term, a singular term, which is exactly singular like the graviton. And we extend, expand the solution, the solution with a blue term, which is regular. It's regular as the free solution. This intermediate term is zero on the boundary, but it is not in H1. And with, ANSAT, with this ANSAT, we can define the holographic operator by considering phi2 as a renormalized re re uh, value of the field and the boundary. Phi2 is given by the limit of z three alpha phi when z tends to zero. And this value defines an operator and will prove that this operator is one to one. It's a proof of an holographic principle. Few words uh, for the uh, on the strategy. We forget the x variable by taking the partial Fourier transform. And we use the previous trick by considering z as the radial coordinate of some Euclidean space of six dimension. And the Friedrich solution are associated with a u, and the u is solution on the whole Minkowski spacetime if psi is a Friedrich solution. Therefore, if we want to construct solution of uh, the klein gordon equation in anti space spacetime, which are not Friedrich solution, we have to construct a U solution of Minkowski spacetime outside the origin, which is not solution on the whole Minkowski spacetime. The most, the most simple idea is to add a singular potential supported by the origin, where uh, delta is. Uh, usual delta distribution. L de U is a continuous linear form on the Sobolev spaces. And it appears a paradox. It appears a paradox since uh, in six dimension, the delta function, delta distribution, is in H minus 3 minus epsilon. Therefore, if we consider a solution in the usual scales of uh, Sobolev spaces, if this solution is such that L de U is non zero, necessarily S is strictly less than minus one. But in dimension six, the test function outside the origin are dense is H minus one minus epsilon. Hence L equals zero. Conclusion we need a new functional framework. L2 is not adapted to describe this. Equation. 
how can we construct uh, this new functional framework? We recall we want to, to recover the mass, uh, massless uh, graviton. Massless graviton is given explicitly by this uh, special function with this expansion. And in this case, L de u necessarily is equal to minus 4 pi 3. Finally, it's natural to consider this and that. And our new boundary construct rely the singular coefficient, the singular term characterized by V2 and the others. And our boundary constraint will be a linear combination of this quantity. Uh, this slide is rather ugly, just to say that uh, we use an abstract machinery uh, given by Kurasov. We replace in the previous approach this function singular z uh, minus uh, 4, z minus 2, and so on, by function having the same singularities, but related to the Helmholtz operator with fr some free parameters, sorry, mu g and so on. And so we introduce a space each node with singular part, regular part, each node replaces L2 in the usual approach. And so on, we introduce H1 in H2, and we consider the operator, which is a hyper, hyper singular extension of the Laplacian. And we, we introduce this domain with uh, this linear combination involving uh, U1, U2. U1 and U2 are the component uh, associated with the more singular part. And the fundamental lemma is we have construct a self-adjoint operator, which is an hyper singular extension of the Laplace operator. Finally, we have construct a scale of new Hilbert spaces based on the ansatz with singular part, less singular part, regular part, and so on. And in this new functional framework, we can solve by the usual uh, spectral uh, techniques the initial Cauchy uh, problem with, with this constraint, uh, the solutions are weak. The boundary conditions are not uh, satisfied in a, in a strong sense, but uh, just in the sense of uh, d alpha value distribution in time. Therefore, we have solved the initial boundary uh, problem. Uh, there exists uh, some high order uh, energy con conserve or energy. The holographic operator is not trivial. It's associated phi 2 at the initial uh, data. And the more important part of this theorem, this operator is one to one. We have proved the holographic principle. Some remarks. The family of the condition, this family is given by alpha zero, alpha, alpha one, alpha two, is a very large family. Uh, we have the constraint here, gamma is the Euler constant. Uh, two important things. Uh, we have constructed a really large family. And for a, a large family, the massless graviton is in our theory. Moreover, the conserved energy, uh, which is ugly, is positive when uh, this constraint is satisfied and coincides with the usual energy for the massless gravity. Finally, how can we interpret uh, our new dynamics? Here are our new dynamics. We can 
characterize this new dynamics by this system of coupled equation. Box are the usual uh, wave equation in uh, four-dimensional Minkowski space-time. And we have two uh, usual wave equations, the, the equation in antidecitor space-time, and all the unknown, phi naught, uh, phi 1, phi 2, phi, uh, phi r, I related by the boundary condition. These solutions are not, not at all the previous Friday solution. The dynamics are not trivial. Phi 2 is non, no zero if phi is no zero. It's the, prin the holographic principle. It remains uh, every several, several open problems. Uh, such as propagation of singularities, totally open, and scattering theory with a delicate investigation of a singular continuous spectrum, and so on. This ends the first part of my talk. Now let me introduce the basic idea of the brain cosmology. Brain cosmology is the idea that that our world is uh, just a sub-manifold of some universe with higher uh, dimension. For instance, we consider the five-dimensional uh, antidecitor space-time, uh, and uh, we consider a brain, that's to say a 4D sub-manifold, localized at W equals equal to zero, and we impose that the restriction of the metric on the brain is solution of the Einstein equation in four dimension. And the, the metric outside the brain is solution of the Einstein equation, but the metric on the wall manifold is a non-smooth solution of the Einstein equation. That's to say the second right-hand member, uh, energy momentum tensor, is not a function but a distribution supported by the brain. And so we deal with a weak solution of Einstein field equations. For instance, if we take W, a, a, a of W equal W, or minus W, we obtain the Minkowski brain, or the Minkowski brain with negative tension. It depends of the sign of A at the infinity. Since we have the uh, foliation of the antidecitor spacetime by, by a family of uh, decitter uh, spacetime, we can introduce by the same way the decitter brain. And the great question in the broad cosmology is the stability of this cosmological model. Here I uh, just speak on the linear stability. I mean by uh, the linear stability the following question. If we consider the Klein-Gordon equation in the whole universe, five-dimensional universe, the wave equation that we consider has a delta potential singular potential. It's equivalent to consider the same equation on the strip, on the right strip, and now the wave equation has just smooth potential but a Robin-like condition on the boundary. And now the question, the issue of the linear stability is following. We solve the equation, the free wave equation, and we want to to prove that the solution is the sum of the massless graviton on the brain plus a lower term. And the idea is the lower term is given by the Kaluzak line tower. I work in the exact antidecitter space time, hence we can use the spectral method and explicit computation. As regards the geometric uh, Framework. Here is the conformal Penrose diagram. Z equal the constant 
is a Minkowski brain. And z equal alpha t, where alpha is between minus 1 and 0, is just a Dositer brain. It's very, very, very simple. Just a slide for the Minkowski brain. Uh, it, all this result was uh, published uh, two years ago. We consider the waves, the gravitational waves, which are solution of uh, this equation. On the brain, on the Minkowski brain, we have the Robin-like uh, condition. We work in, uh, in this interval for the five dimension. We introduce the usual uh, framework, functional framework based on the energy. And we have uh, all the all these uh, results. The mixed problem is well posed. We have recovered the massless graviton. We can prove there exists a Kaluza-Klein tower. And using this Kaluza-Klein tower, we can establish dispersive estimates, strict estimates, and we develop a wall scattering theory with asymptotic completeness of the wave operator, existence of the scattering operator, description uh, explicitly explicit of the resonances on the Riemann surfaces of the logarithm, and so on, and so on, and so on. The, the theory is complete, and the conclusion is the Minkowski brain is linearly stable. Second, second model, the Minkowski brain with a negative tension is the same equation, but the domain of study is now uh, zero one, and we have a, a true singularity of zero. We have to consider the boundary of the antidesiter space-time. We have al always the uh, Robin-like uh, condition. We work in the functional uh, framework of the first part of uh, my talk. And we have all these results. On the boundary of the universe, we have the implicit Dirichlet condition. The mixed problem is well posed. But there is no normalizable massless graviton. We have lost the graviton. There exists a Kaluza-Klein tower, and we can obtain dispersive estimate and so on. The theory is complete. But this model is not very realistic since we have not, we have no normalizable massless gravity. This is the conclusion. Now I would like to uh, describe a new model, a mo uh, model of moving brain, essentially a Dositer brain. It's uh, given by uh, a sub-manifold on the point carry patch. Also, the point carry patch is uh, defined by uh, this manifold and this metric. And the Dositer one is just the sub-manifold given by z equal alpha t alpha between minus 1 and 0. A picture will, uh, will follow. I uh, define this new, new time coordinate and it, it easily uh, to see that uh, the induced metric on the brain is given by this expression, and this is exactly the Dositer metric. Now we want to investigate uh, our uh, waves in the causal past uh, domain of the brain, which is exactly given by this bulk. This bulk has uh, two boundaries, a brain and a Cauchy horizon. And we want to investigate the Klein-Gordon equation in the bulk with some uh, condition on the brain, Robin-like condition. C is a dimensionless uh, parameter which expresses uh, the, the strength between uh, the brain and the field. M in the bulk of the anti space spacetime. B is the brain. And we work in this domain. T equals minus Z is a Cauchy horizon associated to the brain. And we have to consider this equation in this domain, which is time-dependent, 
with this boundary condition on the brain, which is time dependent also. It's rather unpleasant to have a, a problem with uh, time dependence in the domain of study in, and in the boundary condition. And we introduce a clever uh, change of variable, which replace the bulk by a strip and the brain by just the brain now in this coordinates is just uh, localized at rho equal to zero. To understand what's rho and what's tau, tau is given is a new parameter uh, of time, a new time coordinate, and tau equal constant is a submanifold, which is space-like, and we work with new coordinate tau and rho. With this coordinate, the time dependence is inside the equation and not inside the domain, and the boundary condition doesn't depend on the time. We can apply the usual machinery by uh, Cato to solve the initial boundary com problem for the hyperbolic equation with time dependent uh, coefficient. And secondly, we can express the solution as a sum of a finite family of solution plus a Kaluza-Klein tower. Here we use a, spectral an a sharp spe spectral analysis of this uh, Strom-Liouville operator here. W are solution of this Strom-Liouville operator with the boundary constraint on the brain. In this finite family, W is a finite energy, is normalized. In the tower, in the Kaluza Klein tower, W is not a, an eigenvalue, but a generalized eigenvalue. And finally, we, sh we want to prove that when the mass is zero and the constant C equals to zero, we have a linear stability. That's the pro program. To define the functional framework, we consider the energy, natural energy. Therefore, we introduce all this space. X0 uh, is L2, L2, L2 type, uh, X1 is H1 type, and so on and so on. And finally, we have this equation we introduce the, this domain to take into account the condition on the brain, and we can solve the initial boundary value problem. If we take uh, u0, u1 in our uh, space x1, x0, we can solve our Cauchy problem, and uh, we find uh, the usual uh, strong solution if the initial data are sufficient, sufficiently uh, smooth and so on. It's uh, just a, con a consequence of the Cato uh, machinery. Now we want to express our solution in terms of Kaluza Klein Tower to investigate the linear stability of the brain. For that, we have to perform a very, very precise uh, analysis, spectral analysis of the storm, this storm UV operator. First, if uh, we want to, to, to find the eigenvalues, we can, uh, we can find the eigenvalues as the roots of this uh, transcendent equation involving uh, generalized uh, Legendre function. And we have uh, an expression, uh, ugly expression of uh, eigenfunction, and so on. We, we have a complete description of the point spectrum. As regards the generalized eigenfunction, a terrific expression, uh, just uh, it exists. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could use it to obtain a strict arts estimate, a dispersive estimate, and so on. 
the main theorem. Our solution can be expressed as the sum of a finite, finite family of solution with finite energy, which is given by the product of a solution of the Clyde Gordon equation on the brain times a generalized uh, an eigenvalue or a generalized eigenfunction or generalized eigenfunction of the Sturm Liouville operator. This is the main th theorem that describes completely the structure of the gravitational fluctuation or field. And now we want to show that this term is a lower term. We have to investigate the asymptotic behavior of the solution of the De Sitter, of the Klein Gordon equation in De Sitter spacetime. What's the De Sitter spacetime? It's a square. In fact, we, we don't work in the whole De Sitter spacetime, but on half De Sitter spacetime, it's the steady state universe, the white triangle. And our problem consists in investigating the asymptotic behavior on the time infinity. Well, we solve uh, the, Cauchy, the, Klein, the Cauchy problem for the Klein-Gordon equation in the steady state universe explicitly by using a Fourier analysis. It's easy, an exercise. There we have some, di some results of decay by usual uh, manipulation with uh, pointing vector and so on and so on. And we arrive to the important result. When the mass of the Klein-Gordon field is uh, strictly positive, we can estimate very, very precisely the decay, the rate of decay of the field. Essentially, when the mass is positive, the field decays exponentially. We have two critical values. Three half is a critical value. Uh, kappa is the square of the mass. And uh, kappa equal to is the value of kappa for uh, the conformal invariant wave equation is a critical value for which this max is exactly minus one. Well, the conclusion is the massive Klein-Gordon field in the on Earth in the uh, space spacetime decay exponentially. Very interesting what happens for the massless field. There exists an asymptotic profile at the time infinity. That was proved by uh, Andras Vashi in the general framework of uh, asymp uh, asymptotically like uh, the Sitter spacetime. But we need very explicit expression of the asymptotic profile. Uh, just a remark the asymptotic profile is, much, is more regular than. Uh, can we expect uh, we gain uh, one because we have the explicit expression for the asymptotic profile and we can use the asymptotics of the Bessel function to, to see that uh, the asymptotic profile is uh, very regular. Well, with this uh, solution of the of the Klein-Gordon equation in De Sitter spacetime, we can uh, construct massless graviton in the bulk of the anti-De Sitter spacetime. It's very simple. We take phi, a solution of the free wave equation in steady state universe, and we associate u phi, which is phi but doesn't depend on rho, which is solution, in fact, of the whole equation in the bulk and satisfies the boundary condition on the brain. We have recovered the massless graviton. Now the main theorem of this part is following. 
We consider the uh, gravitational fluctuation. The, that's to say the mass is zero, the constant is zero. Then our weak solution of uh, our initial uh, Cauchy problem, not our Cauchy problem, has the following uh, properties. Asymptotically in time, the, the gravitational fluctuation is asymptotic in, uh, to a massless graviton. That's to say the calvisac line tower decays. And the massless graviton, which is uh, asymptotic, is uh, explicitly uh, recovered and known by this initial data. Conclusion, conclusion the Dusseter brain is linearly stable. It's the first uh, result on the stability of the linear stability for a moving brain. J'ai combien de temps Ah, oh, plus qu'il en faut. Now I want to uh, to give some highlight on the propagation beyond the Cauchy horizon. First, I consider the massless graviton, and I want to investigate its behavior at the Cauchy horizon. And it's very easy. It's very easy since we have a result, a precise result, on the asymptotic profile for the free, free solution in steady state universe. If we consider a massless graviton and we, we look for its uh, behavior near the Cauchy horizon, we find that it exists an asymptotic profile, phi, for the massless graviton. It's a preliminary result. Now we want to investigate the fate of the weak gravitational fluctuation beyond the, the Cauchy horizon. To that, I uh, introduce a Cauchy hypersurface in the wall Poincaré patch. I consider initial Cauchy data compactly supported in this part and I pursue by taking by putting the initial data equal to zero on this part. I define in such way an initial data on a wall Cauchy hypersurface. And I want to define, investigate the, sol the solution of the, waku of the gravitational uh, wave equation on this domain. The support is given by uh, this picture, and I want to investigate the behavior at t equals to zero. The result is following. U tilde is the extension of the gravitational waves beyond the Cauchy horizon, solution of the wave equation, and the boundary constraint on the brain. The result is following. When the asymptotic profile phi associated to the asymptotic graviton U phi is no zero, some blue shift appears. The energy blows up. Conclusion, to investigate the, work, the gravitational fluctuation beyond this second Cauchy horizon, we need a new functional framework. For instance, we could use the previous functional framework of the first part of my talk. Open problem, difficult and interesting problem. What's exactly the structure of the singularity at t equals z equals zero? And finally, what's exactly the structure of the singularity on the second Cauchy horizon? While I conclude, there are some references. I mentioned some open problems. We have constructed a, a large, a very large family of uh, new dynamics, which boundary conditions.
And if any is the true one, no idea. It's, uh, it will be uh, interesting to consider other brain cosmology model, in particular colliding model, colliding brains model. The great problem, the huge problem, the nonlinear stability of the cosmological model with brain. We deal with a very weak solution of 5D Einstein field equation. This problem is totally a problem. Totally. The message I'm all alone in this domain. <laughs> <laughs> all my colleagues are, are welcome, in particular my young colleague, to work in this, uh, in this domain with plenty, plenty of fascinating problems. Thank you.